So I want to do one more year at Watford. I'll do a year in America, hopefully. And then I'm coming to the tag. Then you come to Basel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm 100% yeah. coming to the tag. Love that. Clip that something. Yeah. Going forward with hashtag, okay? What's, where, where, where are we looking? What are we thinking? What's the goal? Because yeah. from where you've come from already to be where you are already now is that's like it's some achievement it's outrageous yeah, yeah 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 well speaking of the future I've actually got something for you come Consi- on consider it a down payment for when you obviously do sign the contract with hashtag in the future uh, there is your your shirt for hashtag united mate do guys it. have a look at this it's actually an outfield shirt but you know I'm, I'm sure you'd be fine with that what size is this XL yeah that, I mean that's what we had left <laughs> <laughs> well, come on let's see if it fits come on so you got some big, you got some big. So there's, there's rumours rife, Bayo Akinfemwa, Fozzie. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. Names yeah. being rolled out now. Fair yeah, Bayo has actually said it. Like, well, we obviously me and him have chatted for years about it. He actually managed our first game, like our first ever game. Did he? So he's been around since the beginning. This is definitely going on. Solid. Yes, love it. Get it on. But yeah, uh, Bayo actually confirmed it public. We did a, one of his podcasts yeah. a, month, a few months ago, and he said he will play for hashtag one day. And we. We've been talking about when the right time to do that is. Obviously, still with Wickham at the minute, and I've always said to him, you know, I'm like, large, unless you yeah, think you're large, <laughs> <laughs> stick it on a sixty degree, you'll be fine. <laughs> Let me put it on the wall. Oh, God. Um, but yeah, uh, we've always said when the time is right. But I think we've got to respect. You know, we're not a professional football club, so we, yeah, we're not yeah. going to try and compete with professional football teams. If someone is still in that frame of mind, then obviously they've got to do that and pursue that and, and do what they can. But you know, we're very much. Uh, there as a next best thing I would say depending yeah. on what you're look, trying to do in football but Bayo is just such a good fit for us if and when it happens because like I say he's there at the start him and I have done many things together over the years he's a good lad and isn't he's it? a big good friend Funny of mine guy. Like I'd love it on a personal level but also like I think he could do a lot of damage in the league we're in yeah for sure and um, it's a nice transition for someone I'd say coming to the end of their career especially if they're going into media stuff because of what our club is yeah. Yeah, yeah. you know there's a lot you can do there and it's a bit more flexible you come out of an environment maybe where you're training every day and doing all that to suddenly you know three sessions a week including games yeah. like, it's a nice little well that, that's it if you get like Fozzie and Bayo you just sack the midfield and then there you go yeah, route one yeah. bang over the top oh. Tony Pulis dream man. <laughs> happy Wet day dream. <laughs> he's all over it I've got to say we, so we played against Adebayo last year obviously he played for Wickham we were at Watford we were in the same league I know he's a, an absolute tank and he's not going to cover the yards he's not going to cover ground it's yeah. a given he's a big old bloke and he looked at times like his knees are shot but he would, yeah. he, do you know what I mean he'd do his job but for what he is and what he did I honestly I don't think I've ever played against anybody as good or as effective as what he did seriously they, they would just play to him all day long they would kick it up he would get hold of it he would he would be holding off two three men at a time he was incredible right he, he was man of the match tonight he was brilliant at Wickham wasn't he he was, brilliant. He, he was incredible he was a nightmare to play against honestly yeah. he was an absolute nightmare to play against but not only just as a player as a bloke like oh my god you hear the way he was talking to the lads and helping them and like really? like all that kind of stuff it was so nice to see like absolutely wicked kind of yeah, thing. He's so, top man. He's great yeah that'd be wicked so like in a couple of years time so guys this is this is my dream anyway I would love to do this I want to do one more year at Watford I'll do a year in America hopefully and then I'm coming to the tag then you come to Basel oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm 100% coming to the tag love that clip that somebody oh, what's yeah, the goalie called who's the goalie sorry it's, we got, well, well, Jacko's Jacko, 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 original Jacko, keeper yeah, Jacko and Pagey Jacko's 42 and Jacko yeah. has said this is his last year is it for sure he said yeah. that four years in a row yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Be realistically out. to be fair to me he broke his leg at 40 and came back fair from news, yeah. Um and we've got Pagey as well he's just joined us last season but I mean you've got a couple of years to worry about that mate yeah so, don't yeah. worry about it non-league fine. goalkeepers change every five minutes anyway so <laughs> what we'll do you do do you play out from the back or anything like that because I don't know if I'm going to be able to lump it anymore <laughs> in a couple of years time. we can do we've got, we've got 3G surface mate there you go. Surface. Mate, how do you feel I'll about that I don't know if I'll be able to do many training sessions <laughs> I'll turn up on a Saturday lads. I'll say, I'll t- it's all in your head I told you earlier I'll <laughs> be one of those guys you got, you're either in or you're out of course out. I'm doing that I'm not to training look I think I'm right in saying the club you started at your very beginning of your youth career was it Racing Club Warwick You've done more research than us here, yeah, by the way. I think they're at the level that we've... Well, they were at the level that we've... You've played, maybe, at the level we've just An gone An equivalent to. level, basically. Yeah. So you're in the Ismian League now, which is the eighth level, eighth, eighth tier of uh, English football. Yeah. And I think back then, I think it was very similar sort of thing. So back then, it was a Dr. Martin's... Western that we were in. That's where I started, obviously. Um, which will absolutely, actually bring me really nicely on to the next part. Because uh, having played at that level, it was semi-pro at the level. We was training kind of Tuesday night and you would play on a Saturday or Wednesday or whatever it was. Um, I remember playing for Racing Club Warwick and I was on 30 quid a game. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. So we would play on a Saturday afternoon. 
I would get 30 quid in a brown envelope and it was like I'd won the lottery. Like, <laughs> honestly, I'm not even joking. How old were you at the time? I was 17 years 17. old, right? And so I was getting 30 quid on a Saturday. This is before United. But this is before everything. This right. is like before football started for right, me. Kind right, of thing. Right. I hadn't even turned pro at this level yet. So I um, I would get my 30 quid and we would, we had just started going out. The lads had started going out to Leamington and stuff like that. So it paid for my Saturday night. And th- back yeah. then, 30 quid would pay Happy for days. your Saturday night. So that was... What twenty odd years ago? Stop leave my fan alone, all right? Um, so we were talking. So that's sort of like twenty years ago, okay? Yeah, twenty years ago, I would be on thirty quid a game. What are we talking now? What sort of pay scale are we talking for yeah. for hashtag, for example? Well, I mean, the league it's mental what money there is in non league now. So, like for example, I know a team one level above us who have gone fully professional. Who? So they're they're not even. I don't know if I'm allowed to say it because it's a bit of a rumor. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. they're not. Um, even in the conference, not even so in the we're talking wow. seventh, we're talking sixth, seventh tier yeah. in the football, yeah. fully, and fully below the conference. Yeah, so which is mental. It is I mean, mental. Bear in mind that the conference and the, or the national leagues is now known isn't supposed to be professional. Everyone in the national prem is professional, so it's a professional league. It should be the fifth professional yeah, league. Yeah, yeah. And then the south and north, you're left behind if you're not really at this point. So it's like and we're only a couple of divisions away from that. So that I mean that, there is a lot of money in it, but there's a massive misnomer and common misconception yep. with hashtag that we throw money at our players. Yeah. I think like, that from the outside looking in, honestly, I, I would say you surely have a bigger budget than we have the lowest, we have, the lowest we have, wage budget in the, the league. Budget of the league from last season. And we've said this, and no one believes us. But obviously, asking our players, like, no one believes yeah. us. The fact of the matter is, I'm very honest about it. I'm trying to run this club the right way. I'm not trying to. Um, throw a load of money at something to get something tomorrow and then change it. I'm trying to slowly yeah, progress yeah, the yeah, team yeah, yeah, so yeah. we never go backwards. So we see our first season in our league. We're in, the, we're in the 10th division at the time of England. Very few teams, some teams in that league were paying. Some teams were, but yeah. most of them weren't. Why would we pay in that league when we have, are the best team? In the, I mean, we're the biggest team for five leagues above us, in my opinion. Yeah, I'm being legit sure. here. Now, not everyone's going to agree with me. But in my opinion, we're the biggest team, certainly in Essex. We're bigger than Southend. We're bigger than Colchester. We're bigger than Chapter. Southland have been playing Leeds football, but how many people in the world have heard of Southland United? I guarantee you, 10 times that amount of people have heard of Hashtag United. For sure. Yeah. It doesn't mean that yeah. we're better than them. No. We're not. But you've got certain variables. We're, we're big. And so at 10th level of English football, why would we pay? And this is not to discredit our players. There's players that could earn more money elsewhere. If they needed it, they didn't sign for us. It wasn't right for them. And yeah. I respect that. So we went up to ninth tier. We did start paying very small expenses. But still, literally petrol fees. Yeah, and all I'm that not kind even would we'll cover yeah. it. Yeah, not yeah, even we'll yeah, cover yeah, it. Yeah, it's yeah. Three sessions a week wouldn't cover it, and that's been the case for the last two years. We are going to up it a little bit now in this league because we have to. But we will be one of the least paying teams in that league. I guarantee you. And at what point do you get to the stage where you're buying players? Because yeah. because we were chatting about this earlier, weren't we? And you hear like mad stories of like ex pros when they were playing non league and go, "I was mm. signed for like a." a set of kit and a chocolate bar or something bag of balls, <laughs> yeah, cones, bag yeah. of balls and some cones and you know, at what point do you start signing players we only buy a player if they're under contract and under yeah. contracts are quite rare at this yeah. level still you do get it but it's not common and then if they are under contract it's kind of like a massive barrier to a club like us at our level to buy someone because it puts a price on it so it just doesn't it's not going to happen for us anytime soon there'd be no need for us to what we're talking conference maybe if you get into conference maybe you have to start doing something I think like it that. depends on what we're trying to do I think we want to go we want to uh, We've had quite an old squad for the last few years. Yeah. Like right mm. first season in non-league, our defence was forty-year-old goalkeeper. You know, Tom Williams used to play yeah, for Wickham. Yeah, yeah. He was our left back. At he was in one of your 30. videos the other day, weren't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so he was thirty-eight at the time. Mm. Simon Peddy was thirty-eight. Jack Harrison was thirty-five, mm. and then we had a twenty-five-year-old. Isn't that like, wrong with it? That's 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 yeah, it works. It, it does. Works. It gets you a long way. I think now we want to look for the future because a lot of those guys are guys been with us for a long time yeah. and they're sort of coming to the end of their journey with us. So I think that. Um, we want to try and we think our best strength as a club is to give young people a platform because it's such a great opportunity. Look at some of the stuff like Scott Pollock had at one of our first yeah, academy yeah, series. Yeah, yeah. He's pro now. Like it's a great opportunity to show what you can do. We have got a full youth team now. We've got 500 players across the boys and girls sections. We can be a great ladder for people mm. to then go and be what we can't be just yet, you know, which is a fully professional team. So that's what I think we want to do, isn't it, really? Yeah, I think... There is, a, there is a great way that we can, in, for a certain amount of time, and we may well be about to find out where the end of that is, is if someone's playing non-league and maybe getting 50, 100, 150 quid a week that maybe has a good job already and they do their football as a passion still, I know there's some people that do it as to supplement their income, but we can be a really exciting proposition for those yeah, sort of sure. people because they don't need to earn X amount of money. They might want to, but they might want a brilliant experience. And that's what we can offer them is they can come and play in front of literally hundreds of thousands of people every week, be stopped for selfies when they get petrol, at the, at the, you know, go to Tesco's, get yeah. selfies, feel like a pro yeah. 
without having to be at that level. So we can offer that experience. Thanks for listening, you lovely lot. I hope you enjoyed it. The full version will be dropping this Sunday on the Foscast Podcast YouTube channel.